So next, uh, we are going to see how unemployment varies over time, actually. Um, so we've seen the size, the average size of the pool of unemployed. Uh, we said it was you know, maybe 8, 9 million people on average. But it turns out that the number of people who are unemployed over time varies a lot. So here, the graph that you have, um, so you can see from 1951 to 2019. So again, this is a graph for the US. And this is the unemployment rate. Oh, sorry, I don't want to do that. Right, so this is the unemployment uh, rate for the US. Um, so it's a rate which means that it's the number of people who are unemployed divided by the size of the labor force, right? As we saw earlier. Um, so this is showing us how that unemployment rate varies over time. Um, so what are the key things that we can see here? So first we can look at the average level. And in fact, if you computed the average, you will see that um, the average unemployment rate is roughly around 6% around um, that period, just a little bit um, below that. Uh, so your average unemployment rate, it's you know, around 5.8% um, in the US if you look at the post uh, at the post work period. So you know, just below 6% of the labor force is all uh, unemployed on average. So that's uh, sizable, but much less than in uh, a lot of European countries that have an unemployment rate uh, you know, much higher than that, maybe around 9 or 10% on average. Um, so what else do we see that's quite striking? Um, so I guess here what's striking about that number is that it's really not zero. So the, this idea of a competitive labor market that we discussed at the beginning with no unemployment, that's just totally unrealistic. In fact, there is always about um, you know, 6% of the labor force that would like a job but cannot find one. So it's very important to understand why these people are sitting here wanting a job but not able to find uh, to find any. So what do we see? Something else that's very striking is that, that unemployment rate is not constant over time at all. And in fact, it's fluctuating very, very widely. So you can see it's sometimes as low as 3% as we had at the very beginning of the period. And sometimes it's as high as 10%. For instance, what we have in the, in the 80s here. And uh, you know, what we had also, so this in fact is close to 11%. Uh, and what we had also very recently uh, in 2009, at the peak of the Great Recession. So we can see very large variation from 3% to 10 or 11%. Something else that's very striking is that you can see it's as if the unemployment rate is doing waves over time. So you have periods when the unemployment rate is very low, and then they are followed by periods when the unemployment rate is very high. And it turns out that these fluctuations are what we call business cycles. the business cycles are the systematic fluctuations in the unemployment rate. Um, and so you can see what I've done on this graph is I've added shaded areas in gray, and these areas, they represent the official recessions in the US. So you can see you have you know, one recession here, you have one recession here, one recession here, one here, one here, little one here, 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 and then here. You can see, and these are periods that are officially uh, noted as a recession. And what makes a recession, as you can see, these are periods in which the unemployment rate increases a lot. So to, go, to say that we're in a recession, there are a lot of things that are looked at. Um, so they look at the unemployment rate, they look at how quickly GDP is falling um, and things like that. But in practice, when the unemployment rate goes up, you know that you're going to be in a recession. Some of these recessions on these graphs are quite famous. So for instance, here, you can see that recession here, that's what we call um, the Great Recession, you know, around 2009. Um, you can see, uh, so here's this little recession here, around 2001, 
that's the recession that followed the dot com uh, bubble that you have here. This in the uh, early 90s, that's a recession that uh, was at the time uh, of the Gulf War, um, the first Gulf War. Here, these are the recession of the early 80s. Um, these recessions uh, were caused by a change in monetary policy, for instance. And each recession has its own story. Um, here in the 70s, you have recessions that were due to um, the oil shocks, for instance. So each recession has its story. But in the, after each recession, you see a big increase in unemployment. So you can see at the end of each recession, you have really high unemployment. So you can see here, for instance, that's our Great Recession with an unemployment rate of maybe 10%. Here was much less bad, an unemployment rate around 6%. That's a dot-com bubble recession. Here an unemployment rate of around 7%. That was the Gulf War recession. So this is very high unemployment, around 11%. That's what's called the Volcker recession. Volcker was a um, chairman of the Fed. And when they changed, when the Fed changed its the Federal Reserve changed its uh, monetary policies that led to a large increase in unemployment. So here you have the oil shocks, recession, um, and so on. But you can see that after each recession, you have a big increase in unemployment. So this is a systematic pattern. Recessions come with big spikes in unemployment. And here, of course, I haven't showed you what happened in 2020. But if we added the graph uh, for 2020, if we added a year of data, here, what we would see is a massive increase in unemployment today uh, to 12 or 13 percent. So you would see something like this in 2020. A very large increase, unprecedented increase in unemployment. And you can look online for the data and, and see and see that that's what happened. And so what, what we we'll try to understand this semester is why, well, why unemployment is not zero. That's the first key departure from the and competitive benchmark, why we have always the six percent of unemployment. That's one part of the puzzle. And then the second part is why is unemployment changing so much over time? Why is it that sometimes it's low in booms? Here, 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 here. And why sometimes it's so high in recession? What creates these changes in unemployment and what can we do to alleviate them? Because all these periods with really high unemployment are means that you have a lot of people without jobs. So that's something that's very costly from a social perspective and something we'd want to tackle. And so we'll try to look at policies that can help us uh, alleviate these increases in our